What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Bullets, Barbells, and Barbecue. I'm your host, Brett. Uh, Chris isn't here today. I got Matt Double Deuce with me, and I got Tanner the Head. I'm back. He's back. <laughs> uh, we got our show partners, Elite Nutrition Omaha. Check them out at EliteNutritionOmaha.com. Use code B3 at checkout for 10% off, or go to the store and yell B3. Get a free shaker. We also have Rosewood Block. They make the best cutting boards in barbecue. Fully customizable. Uh, check them out at rosewoodblock.com. Use code B3 at checkout. You guys really sucked at that when I was gone. <clears throat> well, I did it. And then Matt was on a delay. Well, Chris was on like a super delay. Yes. <laughs> um, how many how many people do you get that check out with B3 online? Have you ever looked? Yeah, it happens. I mean, is it like frequently? It's con- yeah, it's consistent. It's consistently the same people or is it nope, new people? Consistently, or? This co- consistently, there are people who check out with it. It works out. That's cool. I need to reach out to Rosa Block and see if they get anybody from us. Well, I know they have at least one. Well, yeah. Because, you know, when when, uh, <laughs> when Ron was here from Helping You Barbecue, we were talking about the price of the blocks. And, I mean, I think they're they're not cheap. But he made a good point because everybody sees, like, the uh, the boost boards, like on Cooking Network or the Food Channel. You know, they have them on there all the time. And he made a good point. He's like, if you got a boost block the size of this brisketeer that we have here, it would probably be, like, $600 or better. Or Yeah, more. Or better. Mm-hmm. And this is – now, granted, they take care of us at Rosewood, but – Still, I mean, like with the 10% off, what'd you pay for your, cause you got same size. Yeah. And I got it with the etching on it. I was under $400. Yeah. And that's shipped. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's for customized with your. And she said 13 weeks and it was like 13 weeks on the dot. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you might look on there and be like, oh, these are expensive. But if you're going to mm-hmm. look at a, a nice like standard of a cutting board, it's, it's right. It's you pretty can go awesome. And get like for a buddy's wedding, we, we got him uh a set of like prep boards so they're i don't know maybe close to half inch thick yeah but you get multiple sizes and that was i don't know 200 bucks something like that so you don't have to get like the giant <gasps> yeah, you don't have block. to get the brisket here right you don't have to get like the big thing but like even their their prep boards are real nice you can get smaller boards and stuff but i think a good cutting a good wood cutting board is legit like, so am i a weirdo board. i won't put raw chicken on it you are a weirdo. Okay. Yeah. Well, they make the toppers. You can get a topper for yeah, it. Yeah, I just, like, uh, I, me and chicken have problems. I mean, I, I well, eat that chicken. guy's still eating raw chicken. He hasn't got a tummy ache. Yeah, it's been well. 70 days. <laughs> <laughs> 70 days. I mean, that's, so I'm, I'm guessing he's probably eating a higher quality, like a smart chicken or something. Yeah. But maybe there's some. You know what? That. Why don't you go get some Walmart chicken and try that out, bud? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> but I wonder if there's maybe a little overhyped. That's on the, sale. Maybe there's a little overhyped to the bacteria in the chicken that... I mean, it's still... The they try to scare everybody. There. Like, when we make, like, a Thanksgiving turkey, Amber, like, walks around behind me with, like, a bottle of fucking bleach, basically, because she... Well, you know, I was worried about the poultry germs and whatnot. So my buddy does animal genetics, and he said that beef, soup, like, super clean. Pork basically bred all the disease out of it. He's like, chicken, cook that shit to the temp. <laughs> like, he's like, you can cook well, pork under a little bit. I think beef, though, there's only one... Cap- I think... Ground beef, right? You probably need to cook a little. Make sure it's cooked through on because ground. It, because it, yes, because the surface of it. Because you're not. Yeah. You know, guys. You guys know Bobby Flay. Yeah, I don't so, know him personally. Yeah, oh, I've been to a couple of his restaurants, and you know, it's always just chefs like, I want my steak and my burger medium rare. And he's like, he, he was on Instagram. He's like, I'm gonna come out and just say something a little controversial. I don't like a medium rare. I like a medium. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want the fat melted. Like I think a burger medium rare is kind of gross. And you know what? A lot of my chef friends think of that too, but they won't say it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, hamburger. I think needs to be cooked though. Yeah, I like it pink, like a little oh. pink in the middle. Like I don't need it like murdered. Now I will say, like meal prep wise, I'll leave it a little under because I yeah. know I'm gonna microwave, gonna microwave it. it. Yeah, and finish it off. Yeah. So. But yeah, because hammer's a little different. It's got a little more surface area that's exposed. One is grind. It, it's and when you grind it, you're breaking up all that stuff, and it's mixed in with other. Like when you're slicing, when I went and picked up my pig, they were slicing. They were slicing pig. Um, like you could just see it. Like the counter is right there, and like it's clean, right? It's just one cut. It's like yeah, and then. Um, just like on the saw, like, but ground, it's like all mixed in. So anything that's in there from any batch, it has to be mixed together. Yeah. Cause so, yeah. you know, if you look at like a steak, you're like, say you had it trimmed to a square just for easier reference. I mean, you're cooking basically the sides of this, you know what I mean? You're cooking those surface areas for yep. the most part. Whereas ground, 
it's not if it's got a red side it hasn't you know it's been exposed to the elements where a steak the inside if it's red has not been exposed to the elements yes so ground beef sitting at the grocery store all those little pieces of ground beef are all individually exposed to whatever is in the meat counter you know what i mean in the glass so i do think there's that's a why I had a buddy who's a food guy he's like dude i always cook hamburger like all the fucking way through like I leave I leave mine just a little pink. I like mm-hmm. just a little pink too. You're a risk taker, a little bit. And then if you're a, a trick that I have, because sometimes if you use use lean beef and you're making burgers, like they're not juicy, mm-hmm. you know, it dries out. So I'll take like an onion, throw it in the food processor, and then scoop some onion juice and then some like really minced up onion in it, and it like adds moisture in. Yeah, if, uh, which fact I learned uh, when I took my sausage making class. When you're, they weigh their ingredients because they'll do it all by weight. Yep. Onion is considered liquid. It's not considered. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not like water or something. Because the way when it breaks, like you said, it breaks down for the moisture. So like where you weigh seasonings, that's different. You weigh that as a separate ingredient, as a as a solid seasoning, but you weigh onions as a liquid. Because sausage making a lot of that stuff is a lot like baking. Like you have to have you have to have the ratio right between Mm -hmm. wet and dry. Yeah, it's not just you know like oh I put about two cups in there. No, they do it all on ratio. Yep. And even like um, Amber's been doing, like you look at like a food scale, like it might say, hey, like two servings or a serving is about three pieces. But if you look at the grams and you weigh it, it might be four pieces or it might be two pieces. So, so something weighing, like- in, weighing in grams for like a food scale for your diet stuff will make a difference. Mm-hmm. Pro, plus or minus. So N- Nicole bakes a lot. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, not lately for us, but whatever. <laughs> We, well, still, we, still, we still love you, Nicole. It's fine, but it's you know we're just saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about ready to talk shit. Well, I think she's still mad at you, Brian. But um. <laughs> that's fine. Me and Noel are fine. Okay, <laughs> we are tight. <laughs> yeah. um, something I should not know is that there's 120 grams in a cup of flour. I should not know that. I well, do unless know you make this. it yourself, but you haven't because you're a quitter. No. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. It's just like I just know that <laughs> I just didn't. I just stopped. That's all. Yeah. No, I think like, when I stopped, there's a difference. <laughs> I just haven't done it yet because I just know that as soon as we do that, like I just know I'm gonna end up with goats and baby cows in my house. Like I just know this is gonna happen, <laughs> you know. And the longer I can kick something, uh, the longer I can kick a can down the road, the longer I have before I have a baby cow in my house. <laughs> I just don't know how you still don't have some kind of fire-powered cooking. We've talked about this before. You don't have a green egg. You don't have a drum. No, I think I am. I'm trying to figure out which one I want. Or like Matt and I were talking about yesterday, those yakitori's or a Santa Maria. Yeah. And we did find out that basically the only difference is the, the man, Santa Maria cranks the up lift mechanism, yeah. and the yakitori you lift up yourself. Okay. But that's just open flame grilling. Not really. I mean, you could smoke, but it's not going to work very well because you're going to lose in the wind. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm thinking about getting a drum. That drum's actually pretty cool. I told Matt yeah. he should get a drum. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting one. I do have propane. Well, I know, but that's... You got a better chance of cutting a tree down than you do finding a propane line in hard times. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But like you and I have talked, if we don't have power, we don't have a freezer. So... That's why you got a generator. (laughs) You have a generator, right? I have... No, I don't. God, he is not a prepper at all. I don't have a generator, no. Like not even like a little gas-powered... No, because once again, for me, for me, my prepping is more mobile. I'm thinking about you have to go. If you have to stay, like you so can't. So you keep bags of ice at your house? I have a couple bags in the in the freezer, and I have a little ice maker on the counter. Because isn't it? But like I also have, so can you dig so far into the ground, and the ground is like it's always fifty. It's like it's like always forty eight degrees. Yeah, you have to go kind of just below the yeah. frost line, three feet. We'll see. So you can keep your meat cold in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's 48 degrees. It's 48 degrees. It's and not. the thing is, you don't need a freezer because at this point, you're going to start killing your own yes. food. So you still need something to open fire cook, though. But you're, yeah, but I mean, you can open smoke really easy. Like, have you not seen Alone? No, we talked about this already. I have not seen Alone. Why have you not seen Alone? We should have the guy that from Lincoln who actually won Alone. We should have him on. Okay. He's I mean, probably a real prepper. I bet he has a fire-based cooking system. Um, I'm not a... <laughs> Like you I know, have a fire pit no. in the backyard with a grate. See? So. But you can't really mo- you can't go mobile with that though, really. You can't, but I do have oh, like, you could, I guess, yeah. It's not like Do you have solar panels? Like I have mobile solar panels to be able to charge like my little ham radios and stuff like that. 
You have a ham radio? And I have a crank radio. Do you have a ham radio handle? What? No, like, I don't. I don't, have, I don't get it. It's like there. numbers and letters, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get When you have it on your license plate, they don't take you serious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it has to be the zero with a line through it. It can't yeah. just be a fucking... Okay. That's how you know somebody's into ham radio when they yep. have that on their license plate. I'll start, I'll start working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I think at home prepping, like I have water, food. I'm going to have, you know... Now, how I do you cycle have, through that? Do you, do you like use a case, replace a case, or how do you do that? I have jugs, so I just put the RO water in it. If you put an airtight water jug in, it, water doesn't expire. I also have water tabs, just in case. Um, and then you have life straws. Everyone should have life straws. Mm -hmm. They actually sell them at Costco for a little. Like, Is that the one you can like suck pond water through and it basically <laughs> cleans it for you? Yeah, basically you just take a drink, spit it out, and then you can drink pretty much anything. Also, just a little bit of advice, there's a little... Um, well, prepper knowledge. If you're by a body of water and you dig next to it, like 10 feet next to it until the water comes up, it's pretty much a, a filtered well mm -hmm. because it goes through all the rock to come back up. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's all like our water. A lot of the water that people tap into for wells. Yeah, this goes to the water river. table. and the... Yeah, they just dig down to the water table. So it's like a, it's not an aquifer, but you have to go down there and then like the water seeps through the wall into your well and then you pump it up yeah. through there. That's all I had when I was younger. I loved well water. Mm -hmm. I thought like town water tasted weird. It does. So like we're in Utah, so I think it's on a well, mm -hmm. um, but it's very iron. It has well, it's because it's like rural water. Yeah. Where they have their own wells and they plumb to your house. Yeah. yeah. But it's um it has and they're treating it. <laughs> yeah, it has has a lot of iron in it. Yeah, you so. need to get a softener. I have a softener. I mean, we're going to go from prepping to first world problems. You're going to want a softener. I, I have <laughs> I have a softener and I have a reverse osmosis system yeah. in my house. So. Does your RO, our, our reverse osmosis just goes to our refrigerator, though? And do, you, do you have the little thing on the sink? No, we just went to our fridge because we have the water in the door. Yeah, I did it to both because when we cook with it, I'll just use that to fill oh, up. Oh, yeah, we just use the regular softener and, water. And my freaking, and my dogs get RO water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Loki, yeah, Loki does sometimes too. He gets it out of the, but then he would rather go outside and drink his water that birds have been drinking out of. Yeah. Or like it rains and there's some puddles in there. They're out. It's like, you have freaking reverse osmosis water right here in your That's dish. why they're not drinking it. It doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if this is water. Yeah, it doesn't taste like animal shit. Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no seasonings. It's the only thing they have left to feel like they're yeah. like a, an animal. Yeah. Freaking dogs. All they do is freaking lay around and sleep. Jeez. Don't do shit. Sometimes it seems so nice. Yeah. Like we are a little pig. We'll just lay there all day long, like face smashed into the ground, just sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, that looks nice. So nice. How does her back not get sore? Like if I sit around all day, my back hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I think her back hurts if she moves too much. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure one of my dogs is a trap soul. Like <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Like Monk, um, if you look at him, he has human eyes. Like they're not dog eyes. They look like human eyes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm cooking raw chicken. I'm, I'm cutting raw chicken. He's standing there because I, like he knows that I drop shit. Right. So he's always like if I'm in the kitchen, he's always. Yeah, he's go time. Yeah, Nicole gets super pissed. She's like, get out of the kitchen. And I'm like, well, he knows that I'm going to drop something. And yeah, I need when to she gets mad like that, you should be like, Noel, fucking <laughs> chill out, okay? <laughs> well, I'll be sleeping on your couch. So. <laughs> Our couch is comfortable. Oh, perfect. Um, but I looked at him and I said, I said, it's raw chicken, dumbass. I'm not giving it to you. And he looked at me and like got offended. Right, and like, like got walked, the sad face. Yeah, yeah, and then like walked in, like into the room so I could still see him and like turned around and just like stared at me like I'm like I was like whoa I'm sorry for calling you a dumbass <laughs> but it's rot chicken and I had to pet him I felt like he understood me <laughs> you don't give him rot chicken just because rot chicken or he has like a sensitivity to chicken I just <sighs> like our dog has a sensitivity to chicken apparently because he's he's the dog that that it doesn't happen very often but like I will come down and I'll get to this like he will have shit in his kennel. I can smell it from like the top. Like of his, his or like one of yours? His. Oh. He will shit in his kennel. But they still, they sleep in their kennels. Those three assholes, they can't. Mm -hmm. They, like Moose would pee on something. Layla gets on counters and Monk will shit wherever he wants. They don't do it in the house like when they're on their schedule. But like they, like my Moose will not hold it. Like, you know, like Layla. He's like beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just like, I, I, I got to pee. You know? Like, you're not here, so I'm peeing. 
You know, Layla will hold it. Like she'll be like she'll be like shaking. Like, but yeah, Moose will just pee. So they sleep in their kennels. He will still shit in his kennel. So I'm just a little hesitant about what food. How old is he? Old enough to know better. That's yeah, what I'm gonna say that's two and a half. Weird. But it's it won't be. That's only when he has an upset stomach. Like you can. It's like diarrhea or whatever. Upset stomach, diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, maybe he needs some <laughs> some Pepto. Some Pepto. I'll put some Pepto in his bowl. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, dogs are pretty I, interesting beings. They are, and I'm pretty like I said, I'm pretty sure he's a trap soul. Like I don't know what he did in his past life, but he ended up as a dog. So <laughs> with you, <laughs> with me, so. <laughs> Probably need to make some different life choices. <laughs> next time, buddy. Next time. Speaking of trap souls, what do you think is going to happen with this Diddy thing? I okay. Is he still he's still gone? Right? Because there's no reciprocity, right? In Antigua. Yeah. All we well, didn't get on the plane. I don't think. I thought. Well, I thought he sent all. I'm pretty sure he sent all the evidence on a plane because there's no reciprocity. I don't think he got on the plane. Well, I don't think he's around. No one's wrangled him up yet. I don't think. I guess I'd have to double check. Here's the thing. Hollywood is a bunch of pedos. Like um, Cat Williams said earlier, like earlier this year. he was on the, well, he was on uh, Shannon, Shannon Sharp, Sharp. Club That, Cache. that all, everything's coming out in 2024. And he named, he he said, I don't care if you're Diddy or whatever, you know, like he said, it's all coming out. Like they're a bunch of pedos. They're a bunch of fucking weirdos. And I don't know why the left wants to protect all of them. Well, I was going to say, I do find it strange that. Two of the largest trafficking and pedophilia people who got brought down were massive supporters of the Democratic Party and especially the Clintons. Because they're fuck like, okay, I'm gonna go. And I'm not even I'm not even trying to make this like 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 all the Republicans are better. I'm not trying to say that either. But no, there are dirt balls everywhere. Two of the largest rings have been brought down between Epstein and Diddy, and they were both massive supporters of the Clintons and the Obamas. Because because I don't know what it is, but when these people get rich, and I don't know if rich people get weird when they're rich. What I think it is, or if here's what I think it is. I think it's you get to a point where you can buy anything, so you buy things you're not supposed to buy. You know what I mean? Like, as drugs isn't really like a risk anymore to buy like some cocaine. Like that's like they were doing that when they only had a couple million dollars. You know what I mean? Like I think like you look at uh, Jared from Subway. Yeah. Same idea. You start to get a bunch of money where you can buy anything you want, right? There's really no limitation on what you can buy. Because once, you, once you've made like $100 million or $50 million, what can't you really buy? But they're, it's just, they're, they're sick fuckers. No, they are. But I think yeah. that's what it comes down to is the rush of you're buying something you're not supposed to buy. Yeah. And they're fucking creepers on top of it. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's so much of that. And like um, Corey Feldman, they, they went back and brought a lot of his interviews back. And he talked about the pedophilia in Hollywood, And too. then he was on The View, and Barbara Walters basically told him to fuck off. You know, like, <laughs> like you're just trying to bring down a whole industry. It's like, well, like, the only person who actually helped Corey Feldman was Michael Jackson. See, and I don't know. And I've I, always stood at the idea. I don't think Michael Jackson was a pedophile. I don't think he was. I think he, I think he lost his childhood because he got famous so fast. And, they, and so he, I don't think he ever grew up. And his bodyguard came out. And said he got a he has a letter from Michael Jackson like an, as an adult and like you would think a fourth grader wrote it. So I told when well, when Doctor Drew was still here, I told him he should like look at it and there should be a diagnosis called Michael Jackson syndrome for some of these child stars who don't have a childhood and they get weird like um, the chick that was on Nickelodeon she was part of that new Quiet on the Set documentary Hayden Panet isn't it Hayden Panet what is her name that. But she got real weird. Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes. She got real weird too, but I think same thing. Her whole childhood was just like she went from like being a regular kid to like super famous. So you don't – like Michael Jackson, like people talk, oh, he had people sleep in his bed. When I was younger, my friends, we would always just share a bed because no one would sleep on the floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think Michael Jackson – did Jack, that as an adult. I think you and Matt share a bed. We have. Yeah. Yeah. I but I think – Sleep on the floor. Again. Yeah. But I think that Michael Jackson syndrome I think should be a real diagnosed thing. Because I think it's where you lose your childhood and you're just like, you still think you're a child in your head. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, and people can disagree. I, I don't know. And no one will ever know. You know, these documentaries that come out and say Michael Jackson was a giant pedo. That sucks because he's not here to defend himself. But no one. I mean, no there's one some that, people that say it was like weird, but, yeah, but I, don't, I don't know. There really has been not been anything. I, the main thing is, is that Hollywood is fucking sick. It is disgusting, you know, and 
like they need to be brought down and I don't understand the protecting like I how is Epstein's list not released like how the fuck is it not like why are you protecting these people do you know but you know why uh, I mean it's political power is why it is but it sucks we that know, that's what everything we know Billy to. we know Billy is on that list well and I don't understand why as soon as they try to throw somebody on there go well I'm sure Trump was there Trump, just because someone was somewhere does not mean someone else was there too right you know what I mean? That's not like an automatic, like, I'm sure someone else was there. So, Epstein, like, I'm not going to be like, well, Stephen I'm... Hawking went there. Yeah. Like, he's on he's on the list for Epstein's Island. There were some really good Stephen Hawking memes so, after that. Yeah. yeah. Some really good ones. But you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm not going to be like, oh, <clears throat> someone was there. So, you know, Bush had to be there. Or, you know what I mean? Like, that just because someone was there doesn't mean someone else was. But the best Epstein story out of all of them has to be Prince Andrew. Oh, yeah. Where the girl who said that he had sex with her. She was like, he was sweating all over me. And then they asked him, he's like, I had a condition at that time where I didn't sweat. That's your fucking alibi? <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't sweat for those three days. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, Did, well, come on. was like a high school kid several years ago who died because people made fun of him for being so sweaty and stinky. Like he put some super like clinical strength deodorant all over his body. And then they had to go to some do some outside activity. And he couldn't perspire and cool down. So, like, overheated got I, I think antiperspirant's terrible. I, like, I put deodorant on so you don't stink. I mean, but I... <clears throat> but even if you put it on, just put it on your pits. You know, you put it on your entire body. Yeah, but you're supposed to sweat. Like, well, yeah. Yeah, like, I... But, I, yeah. I Brent, not to get, but Prince Andrews was, like, yeah. fucking one of the funniest. Like, no, I couldn't sweat that time. <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand. I don't understand the protection of them. I don't get why, like... <laughs> We have to, like, I don't understand why we're protecting those people. Like, we know lists of everything, but we don't know that list. It's been two years. Geeslane Maxwell was convicted of trafficking children. Okay? To traffic children, you have to have a trafficker and a trafficee, someone buying them. Mm hmm. Okay. So, if you're convicted of trafficking, you were selling to someone, and they know this. Who was buying? Yeah, I mean it's no different. Than, <laughs> it's no different when you catch a low-level drug dealer, and you're like, "We want to find your supplier." Yeah, yeah. But I, you don't you don't catch a low-level drug dealer and like, you know what? I caught you with drugs, and we're going to charge you with trafficking. Who'd you traffic to? Nobody. No, that's not the way it works. You know, you might get intent to traffic if they don't have a traffic. They don't have someone buying. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to have a condom full of cocaine in my asshole coming across the border and not sell it. Right. You know. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of keystern going on to not sell it and have a buyer and have a and then know who I can go back to as the buyer. Right. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't. It's too much money and political cover up. And like, I mean, I get there's always cover ups of a lot, all kinds of things, but I uh, I'm a firm believer if you if you take advantage of kids and old people, you should be executed. Completely agree. We need to bring back stoning. I think uh, George Carlin had it, right? You do beheadings. Yeah. And good. then you have three different holes at the bottom of the hill that you can bet which ones go into. Like Plinko. Yeah, this is what this is what George Carlin laid out. But then you let the mob control the speed of the blade, so they still have a say in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like tar and feather people. Yeah. But no, I think yeah, if you take advantage of you rape and fondle kids or do whatever, or you run scams on old people, to me they're the same level of innocence. You know, you... Yeah. You try to scam money out of old people. You're you should be executed. See, whereas I think they should take Epstein's Island, take all the pedophiles and people who scam old people there, and then you can pay to hunt them. <laughs> <laughs> what was that movie? Uh, the surviving island. the game. Was it surviving or the island? Uh, the island might have been one I remember. Surviving I, the game I, with I, ice tea. tea yeah, ice tea. Yeah. The, yeah, but yeah, and you can pay like if you want to go like melee with them, it costs you extra because you have to take like people with you. Yeah. Or if you just want to like snipe them from a distance, you pay a price. Yeah. I think either way you're doing a service. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's great. Like that one convict, you've ever seen that where he's in court and he was like, what did you do to your cellmate? And he was like, well, he he told me he what he had done to kids, so I beat him until he died. And he was already in there for like, and the guy was like smiling the whole time he was saying it. And he was already like life in prison anyway. Yeah. Like they, they should have took years off of his sentence for that. Yeah. But like, you know what? Do you have a chance for parole now? <laughs> you know what you've moved up on my list you're gonna get a christmas card um yeah yeah i don't know i don't think any i don't know i'm I'll, i'm guessing nothing will happen to diddy i don't know i it's it's pretty 
like I, I said, mean, look how long it took him to fucking convict R. Kelly. He's a fucking sick fucker, too. But look how long that took. Well, but understand that all everybody, society, knew that he married a fucking 15-year-old. Oh, you're talking about Aaliyah? Aaliyah was 15. Yeah. Like, and it and was And how like, many years after Aaliyah? I mean, she's been dead for how many years? And he yeah. just got convicted, what, two years ago now? Yeah. Just peeing on fucking kids, basically. He's a fucking sick weirdo. Yeah. But like with Diddy's thing, didn't he? I, they said he had like uh, hidden cameras in every room. They'd have these parties... Basically, with like underage girls and sex workers, they would drug all their drinks, and then there'd be like music executives, celebrities, artists, whoever there, and then they would have hidden cameras all over. So he basically has blackmail on everybody. I bet you that every one of those cameras is in like all of the cameras, all the hard drives, all the recordings, all of that stuff was on that plane, and it's it's gone. It's well, not why would you even back. take it? I just dumped that shit in the ocean on the way by. That's his. That's your safety net. That's the same reason why the list hasn't come out and stuff. Because it, yeah, someone uh, has it. Someone has leverage oh, over someone sure. else. So like, if you, if you, if if some of this stuff comes to light, like I have the list for, <clears throat> for Epstein, and I'm like fucking Tanner's on there. Well, Tanner probably has some other stuff on me, and so it's just this big circle of blackmail evidence, and so that's the name of the game. It's like you own the information, and that way you all have leverage. So it's like mutual destruction if something happens so no one's going to pull the trigger so and the cra- everything burns the crazy thing about everything is that society sees the stuff being hidden okay and I, I don't know how much your average person in society cares but i think there's a lot of people who care and then to take it like the political step further then you have trump right who got convicted of fraud overvaluing his property on a loan okay find half a billion dollars when the loan was was given to, to him by the bank. The bank's the one that has to do due, due diligence. He paid the loan back on time. There was no, nothing, nothing. There were no victim. And the bank still wants to do work with him. They all testified in his favor. Yes. However, so people see this, and that's why Trump's popularity, like every time something like this happens, it goes up because people are like, well, the system's trying to fuck him too. Like he obviously isn't part of it because he's not being protected. And then you have all these people on Epstein's list that are being like, you just see the clear division. That that's why that people are like Trump's one of us. Like, well, he's not one of us. He's a fucking billionaire. He he's not us, right? But he they're going after him in ways that they could go after us, and that's why. He, I, I mean, I mean, people who don't like him, like Mark Cuban, have stepped up and been like, that's not okay. Yeah. Because they know, and then there's that uh, Grant Cardone. Uh, uh, yeah, and Cardone. Then the, he's that yeah. uh, real estate investor, and he said they had like what was it, like 500 million or something like that. They were going to invest into New York, and they pulled it, and they went to like uh, like Miami and somewhere else. And he's like, they won't even. They don't even want to underwrite stuff for New York because they don't know what's going to happen there. Well, and then the craziest thing is that on CNN, they were talking because they said his his Mar-a-Lago was worth 19 million dollars. Is what the, the judge place, said. But yeah, but the place next to it sold for like. On CNN afterwards, when they're talking about how he needs to pay his pay his fine, they're like, well, he could sell Mar-a-Lago for probably a couple hundred million dollars. I'm like, did you are you did you say that out loud, you dumb fuck? Well, and there was a place next to Mar-a-Lago that was valued at like a real decent amount of money. And I was like, Mar-a-Lago has a, they forget Mar-a-Lago is a golf course. Just the square footage and acres that Mar-a-Lago or Mar-a-Lago has to be. It's got to be super expensive in that area. Yeah, it's just so dumb. And like I said... And then that, who was it? Somebody that's a big uh, uh, opponent to Trump who doesn't like him overvalued his house in New York. John Stewart. John Stewart overvalued by his 800, house. By 800 percent. Yeah. Because you know what happens? Okay, if you were going for a loan on something and they're like, hey, how much is Omaha Barbell worth? Okay? You're going to say a number higher than it is. It's called negotiating. Well, it's also called that I may value it differently, but it's your job as the bank to say whether I'm full of shit or not, yeah. right? So you may pull my P&L, you may pull my balance sheet, you may pull my taxes for the last five years, and then you decide whether I'm full of shit or not. If you're like, uh, he's a little overvalued, however, he's been, like, been, good, for, been, been good for 10 years, right? We feel confident in this. The bank decides to loan you. That's not on you. And as long as you pay the bank back, who cares? Yeah, they're like a bank's job in the loan department is literally to determine if you're lying or not. And to make money. Yeah, to make sure something's of value. That's why when you buy a house, they get an appraisal done. Yeah. Because you could be like, hey, I want to buy this house. The guy told me it's worth like 
He's selling her for like two hundred thousand, and the bank will appraise it and be like, "That shit's worth like one fifty. It's a shithole." But like in the seller market, right? They they'll usually okay. Well, we want the sale. Yeah. Right. So they let some. But go get your house. Like go try and get a cash out refinance. Well, Zillow says my house is worth four hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. Yeah, we think it's like three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. You yeah. know, because they 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 they're playing the game. But well, that's it's a risk assessment, which is I mean that's what you that's what Matt does. It's a risk assessment when you underwrite to look at it. Like I could tell you I'm perfectly healthy, and they're like, oh okay, what's your height and weight? And then I tell you, and you're like, well, even though we all agree the body mass index is shit. <laughs> right. But I could be like, I'm totally healthy, and then I give Matt my BMI, and he's like, well, it says you're morbidly obese, so this is going to be your fucking rate. Yeah. Like, or we can all tell you can ever like I always say my grandma always told me nothing's worth anything until somebody buys it from me because I'd always be looking up my baseball cards or something yeah. and she's like I don't know why you're doing that because it's not worth anything until somebody buys it from you exactly we can all think something's worth a bunch of money which everyone everyone does they all think their own shit's worth a lot of money until someone actually values it for you or gives you hey I have this much money I'll give it to you I mean no one's selling something no one's opening price is the actual value yep so, so that I mean, that's my point. It's like the whole. There's two political. sides to law, well, to the law, to the yeah. rule of law. There is, and that's what most people understand is that our criminal justice system, while it is great in many ways, is also it's a two tier system, and the two tiers are money and no money. Those are the tiers. Like if you have money, you can get out of shit. If you don't have money, you're probably fucked. Okay, what is throwing the whole thing in flux is. Trump has money, <laughs> and they're just coming after him hard, hard, hard. Well, and that's what your average person is like. Your average person is like, well, he's obviously not part of it. Well, and I mean, speaking of Trump, Matt, I talked about it yesterday where there were four presidents in New York yesterday. Yep. And Trump was the only one that went to the wake of the, the police officer that got shot by a guy who had been arrested 21 times prior to that and i believe he also had some say in the tunnel of the towers paying off the family's house he did he probably donated the money i'm guessing and dave portnoy who everybody shits on dave portnoy and dave portnoy can be an asshole i'm sure i've watched some of his stuff but he raised like what 1.5 million for that family yep well uh obama biden and clinton were radio city music hall charging a hundred thousand dollars for a picture with each other so the dnc can have a bunch of money so, so Biden could raise $25 million. Here's my thing is, and people are like, oh, and everybody's going to say, well, Trump just did it for a political look. Okay, well, these other presidents were already there. Why didn't you go there for a political look? You're already there anyway. I don't think Trump does things for a political look. No, I don't think so. But I'm just saying, that's what people are going to say. Yeah. But why didn't Biden was there? Why didn't he fucking stop by? Because it doesn't fit his fucking narrative. That's what I'm saying. And the, the, you know who they wouldn't let into the wake? The fucking governor of New York. Kathy Horschel, I think. They wouldn't let her in. They said, no, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of money in, in manner. Like the amount of money the DNC has versus the RNC, I mean, they out fundraise. It's not even close. Yeah, the like RNC they, is real bad at it. Well, and the RNC was super shit. Here's the thing. And just so, like, I, I don't like a lot of the political parties. I can name, I can tell you all the Republicans I don't like. I think Mitch McConnell needs to take a fucking long leap off a short cliff. Like, he can go away. Like, everyone can go. I think I said that backwards, but whatever. I get it. Yeah. Um, I saw the look on your face. I was like, oh, I think I... No, I think you said it right. Though. Okay, yeah. well, whatever. But he'll uh, probably freeze up halfway through. That guy just, like, gets stuck in the Matrix sometimes. Yeah. I don't know what happens to him. But, like, the, the, you just need people who can make change. And people who like need to like the system needs changed. Yeah, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, it's probably a different podcast. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of weird things going on. But it looks like it's gonna be a rough year for Hollywood. Well, it, did it, you guys? Did you any of you guys see um, uh, Leave the World Behind? Uh. Uh-uh. Do you see it? Netflix show Apocalypse. China, I think, is attacking us. They shut everything down. They turn out like they kill the grid the first thing that happens in the movie is that a a ship a cargo ship loses power and ends up beaching in like new york on one of the like up the shore okay the the cargo ship's name was the white lion the ship that hit the bridge like it was the dolly and then uh, the picture i saw the logo was a gold lion and i thought it was pretty interesting do you know who executive produced Leave the world behind? No. Barack Obama. 
the 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 producer of the movie said he was so fucking terrified after talking with Obama about how this would go because it's a it's it's basically a modern like how the world um like they the someone hacks in shuts down the grid they um take all the teslas and they turn them on and they drive them all to wreck and major bridges to bla- so no one can get out so everyone is like trapped and then they and then they play this like ear piercing sound like super high pitched to fuck with people's mentality like it's like basically a complete layout about how to invade the united states without sending one person in that sounds neat yeah, it's on Netflix if you guys want to watch it. That's why you got to stay strapped or get clapped. You know, that's been around. But 50 Cent told me that a long time ago. Yeah. 50 Cent also called out a lot of people. Yeah. He has been for a while. Yep. He so, looks a little skinny right now. I don't know. Skinny little baby. It's probably because everybody called him fat when he was in the Super Bowl performance. Maybe. <laughs> they said he was like full dollar. Now, he's, 50 cent. <laughs> now he's like a dime piece. <laughs> but I don't know. Hopefully everything kind of starts to correct itself out november <laughs> you're you're just gonna be in a in a fucking sea of weird for the next seven months sorry like it's gonna I mean, be a lot, all fucked I mean, up you know a lot of people predict something to happen it's gonna know. it's gonna be a fucked up next seven months and the problem is is that our worst we had covid right before last time yeah but we are like as a mental as a societal mentality like all this crazy shit can happen and like you just like forget and you move on to the next thing. You just forget and you move on to the next well, thing. Well, society is very much what have you done for me lately? But if you go back, like someone this was um like mid January or like towards the end of January, this person just laid out all the weird shit that's happened around the world in Jan in twenty twenty four January, and you're like, Holy fuck. Like if you actually just sat and like listened to it all, like it's it's crazy. It's crazy what's happened around the world and we're only a third of the way in. Do, uh, I don't know. Well, Matt doesn't have the social medias. But I also find it weird. Like, there's a lot of, like, YouTubers and TikTokers, like, younger kids that are just, like, dying. Have you noticed that? Some some YouTuber just got kidnapped in Haiti. Yeah, I saw that. There's, like, a lot of young people dying. Like, out of nowhere. It's very strange to me as well. Do you think it's for I'm not some big conspiracy. I just think it's weird. I've been seeing a lot of that, like, so-and-so YouTuber, so-and-so TikToker. It'll be on, like, uh, on some Instagram feed that they just, like, up and fucking died. Do you think a was it like from heart stuff? Are you talking about like the vaccine? Yeah, I don't know. Because we do have a higher mortality rate than we should right now. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I see a lot of young people dying that, you know, and they don't list like ODs right away. Like back in the day when someone died, you're like, OD fucking guy, you know, because it was always like some rock, some like rock band uh, guy. OD or shotgun. Yeah, those were the two options. Yeah, so I don't know. It's weird times, and hopefully, I mean, society does tend to correct itself. It does. I mean, it's a cyclical thing. Um, it's kind of like what we were talking about yesterday. The the upper one percent, their value went from fifteen trillion to forty four trillion in the last four years, or since twenty twenty. So they've tripled. Well, and Matt and I talked about it, it's all a percentage base, but they've basically tripled their value, where the middle class has doubled their value. Well, I posted this yesterday. It's like the so under Democrat policies that they're supposed to be helping out the little guy, the rich people have gotten infinitely richer, right? And a lot of it's policy-based. Go back to COVID, who got shut down? You got shut down. You can only have 10 members in here at a time. Little businesses got shut down, restaurants got shut down. You know who didn't get shut down? Fucking Amazon didn't get shut down, Walmart didn't get shut down, Target didn't get shut down. None of the giant corporations got shut down. They all made fucking money. They all got richer. Like the policies have, have, have separated the gap. Also, your gas is higher, your food is higher. Your your power, your electricity is higher. Like, uh, you have to. So, went and figured out, like, to buy my house today, my mortgage payment would double mm-hmm. if I went and bought it today. How the fuck can you buy a house? Like, I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up back in generational housing where your kids are living with you, so they can take your house after you die. Like, we're gonna go, but we're gonna do like generational housing because we're not going to be able to buy houses yeah it's it's uh house pricing is crazy and i don't know if it's going to come down but i i don't know and the interest rate was 7.43 is what they threw it in at like that's fucking crazy that is over four percent more than i pay yeah 
Yeah, I don't know. It's weird times. I think it's the weirdest time that I'm sure it's happened in other generations, but it's kind of the weirdest. I think it's weird to us because it's the first time I think it's really hit like us at our age. You know what I mean? Like, like 2008 when they had the recession then, like, I don't think the three of us were in a spot where like we really thought about it as much. Well, unfortunately, that was the year I bought my first business. So, yeah, I thought about it a lot because yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, but at least people our age, time. you know what I mean? Like yeah. people our age didn't really like because we were just like we were probably like just getting, you know, maybe you're getting done with school. Or you're just finally like been at a job long enough where you're making some good money. So you're like, man, everything seems fucking great, man. I went from making like five seventy five an hour to like I'm making like 30 bucks an hour or whatever, you know, yeah. whatever your new job is. So to you, it didn't really fucking matter because like everything was great, you know, like, and we were relatively, we were relatively insulated in Omaha, in Nebraska. We have vi- a yeah. very diverse economy. Yeah. And still the Midwest is still pretty yeah. insulated, but yeah, I mean, I think it'll, it'll correct itself. Like I said, I think as cycles in, in society, like you look at the sixties and seventies and kind of where we're at now and it's kind of, well, I talked to your parents, like their first house that they bought in the eighties, they probably paid 18%. Mm-hmm. They paid between 16, 80% interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that cheap interest. Even like Buffett had said, that was never meant to be as long as it was. It it can't. Like if, I you, mean, as much as you like or don't dislike banks, their business too. They're there to make money, and they're lending you money. Yeah. To make money. But they also got bailed out in two thousand and eight. They did. But they did a lot of shitty mm-hmm. things. They did, as did the car manufacturers. Yep. Except for Ford. Didn't Ford not take the bailout money? I think they were forced to take bailout money, but they paid it right back. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think they will say the, the biggest point of this whole conversation is in the next like seven, do your research. And everyone, everyone, like you don't need to be a prepper to be prepared. No. And, and when you vote, you're trying to decide what you're going to vote for. Don't worry about other people. Yeah. Cause those other people aren't voting based on you. Vote no, based on you. Vote based on you. Like what issues? Like I said, I think voting shouldn't even have names on the ballot. It should be based on issues that you <laughs> like, like. You, you vote you, for you just, like you just check a bunch of you check a bunch of issues and then it says you should vote for. It just automatically does it once you vote. Like I believe in whatever. Like a wait. Like it's like Wade voting basically. Um, yeah. yeah, and whatever you kind of lean whichever way, not toward it does it, but. Because like it, whatever, they're still gonna. It's, it's a two party system. And that's what it's gonna fucking be. So it is what it is. But well, we have RFK trying to make a third. It is, but it's just that's real hard. It is hard. The only time that we had a chance of having a third was when we were both probably. I'm older than you guys. I was in middle school as Ross Perot. Yeah. Ross Perot actually had a chance, and then he dropped out, and then he tried to get back in, and he lost his chance. Yeah, they got a set of ears on him, if I remember right. Yeah, oil money. Yeah, good for him. Yep. So that was a. Uh, not what we were planning on. But, nope, uh, but we have a second one that we can, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, we're trying to inform you and make you a little less shitty every day. That's the real goal. Yep. Go out there and be successful. Be something. Make something of yourself. And uh, like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends and family. Put in your Christmas cards. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>